think of a CD I haven't listened to in a long time. And then I'm like, well, let's see, what cabinet is it in? Where is that CD? <laughs> and then I say, forget it. <laughs> so you probably, some of you may have had that experience. It just becomes inconvenient at a certain point. Uh, you still want to listen to that CD, but the physical aspect of getting it in your hands and into your laptop is a different thing. Also, new laptops don't have CDs. My new, I have a newer laptop. It has no CD drive. So I, if I want to play a CD, now I've got to go plug in my portable CD player and all that stuff. So that's not going to happen. Or maybe you just want to get the clutter out of your house. You know, you, you just want to throw those CDs. You want to get rid of them or you just want to stick them in the garage and get them out of the house. And you just want to go digital. So there's many reasons as to why we would want to take on a project like this. You know, some people have music that's, uh, it could be private performances. You know, if they're musicians, if you have musicians in your family, you may have performances, recordings from them. There's a lot of reasons why you need to keep on, you know, keep these, um, these CDs. We talk about the type of equipment you need. Um, First of all, you do need that CD drive. So if your laptop doesn't have a CD drive um, in it, you're going to have to get one of these uh, little portable CD. They're, they're not just CD. They're CD and DVD writers and readers. So they do both the DVD and CD today. So that's what you would be looking for. Uh, they just attach to your uh, USB port on your laptop, and then you'll be able to read your CDs, or if you have a friend you know that has an older laptop and maybe they still have a CD in that laptop, maybe you can borrow it uh, and just to get your project done. So there's definitely ways to get, you know, the proper equipment that you need for this. And then there's the software. How are you going to, what are you going to um, bring this music in? Uh, you're going to need some type of CD ripping software is what they call it. That's going to read this CD and convert the file to MP3. So it could be Apple Music and iTunes. If you're an, does anyone do iTunes here? Yeah. Oh, Patty, just a little. I saw a little. <laughs> a yes. lot of people. Have, some people have love-hate relationships with iTunes. <laughs> um but yeah, if you have iTunes, uh, it will read in your CDs. Uh, Windows people, you can use iTunes if you want to. Uh, Media Player. Windows Media Player has been uh, on all the Windows PCs. I'm on Windows 10. If I go to the lower left-hand corner of my screen where it says type search here, if I just click here, there's a pop-up. And right here, I can see Windows Media Player. Or you can type it in. If it doesn't show up on the screen, you can just type in Windows Media Player and it should come up on your Windows PC. And then we're gonna look at this app called Express Rip. Because there's a lot of uh, tools just dealing with the uh, copying of the CDs. There's a lot of tools out there. This is a tool I've used um, for many, many years. It's very fast if you just wanna get the uh, MP3 files into a folder quickly. It's um, it's very quick. It really depends on what you're going to be doing, you know, with the files and your reason for converting these uh, files. Anyone have any questions at this moment? All right. So let's talk about the steps. I have one well, question. Oh I'm yeah. Sorry. So if I were to use a Windows, like the media player, would I then be able to do iTunes and play it on my um, Apple devices, like my iPhone? You can, uh, do you have a Windows PC or do you have an, a Mac? Exactly. Right, so the PC will be Windows, but then if I'm gonna wanna play it on an iPhone, which is uh, Apple, um, um. Yeah, you could. Uh, you can download um, iTunes for the win for Windows. You could go that route if you wanted to. So and in other you words, could... if you were going to wanting to use it on an iPhone, which is an Apple, it'd probably be better to use iTunes as opposed to Windows Media, right? 
that's what you're going actually, with. we're going to talk about, yeah, hold, hold that thought for a second, because okay. I'm going to show you an app that you might be interested in, too. It's a little tricky when you're mixing the, the worlds, Windows and Apples, as, as some of you guys know, it can be, it can be complicated. Um, I have not had much success with iTunes on Windows <laughs> throughout my life. Uh, but, you know, I got injured. Uh, <laughs> I got it. I call it injury. Um, when iTunes used to have their own, uh, they didn't do MP3 files. Isn't people remember that when they had their own proprietary file? And that was so hard. You couldn't move it anywhere. You couldn't, uh, you had to stick with, you know, within iTunes, but they did, they do I, MP3 now. So it makes it easier. All right. So uh, I mentioned Express Rip and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Oh, let me show you all of them. This is Windows Media Player, just to show you what it looks like. These are um, some of the albums I've brought into Media Player. If you want to listen to an album, you just click on one of these. Uh, like I got Fergie right here. I'm going to click on this one and I can just click the play button and it will just play right through. It's a very simple program. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it it does the job. If you just want to play the music you know, on your laptop, um, it works fine. I, I will be at the end of this class. You're going to get an email. I'm going to give you some links to. Um, reviews of MP3 player type apps that um, you can run on your laptop. Um, it's going to be a, um, an article about people who use Macs who want to get want iTunes like applications. You know, maybe you don't care for iTunes, you're looking for an alternative. Um, you're going to get a list of alternatives for the Mac. So you're going to get a bunch of that in the email to sort out what you want to do. And there are much more sophisticated MP3 player apps out there um, than, than Windows Media Player. Again, it depends on what you want to do. Some people like it, just keep it simple, hit play, and you know, off we go. Uh, if you want to get more complicated, there are definitely you know, more sophisticated apps. iTunes, this is what iTunes looks like on Windows. come in here and click on these uh, albums that I've uploaded and play them, play the music on them. It's already. All right, hold on. <laughs> the, the, sorry, the music started playing on me. <laughs> uh, so you can go and click on any of these and they'll start playing in iTunes. And the uh, third one I want to talk about is Express Rip. This is just a CD ripping software. It's just a very, you know, program just for that. Um, you're not going to play music through here. You're just going to be doing the ripping part. And as an example, I'm going to put in a CD just to show you what it looks like. I've got, oh, Patti LaBelle. Let's see. I'm going to stick the uh, CD into the drive here. Let it read it. Give it a second to read the CD, and I'll bring the CD in. Perfect. It, it read the CD. You can see the, the, word, the songs here on the left side of the screen. If there's a song you hate, you can uncheck it. You don't have to convert it. So you can make decisions here um, if you don't want a particular song. Um, the one thing to be aware of when you are doing CD conversions, like this one worked great. If you have a CD, let's say it's not one of the original CDs that an artist did. It could be something that someone compiled. You know, remember KTEL? <laughs> That's the greatest compil. Remember the KTEL records? They just compiled a bunch of uh, people's music onto an album. Well, sometimes we have CDs that are like that. And what will happen is the, the names will not show up because it's not in the main catalog. And what will happen is you'll see track one, track two, track three, track four. If you see that when you're doing one of your CDs, don't panic because you can right click and you can rename the track. So you're able to rename it and it, you'll know, be able to import it. You'll get the names off the back of the CD. You know, all the names should be there. Just it's a pain you have to type them in, but sometimes you do hit a you get a CD that it's it's not going to be in the main catalog. 
So I've got the, uh, I've, I've read the tracks. It's Patty LaBelle. I'm just going to put for the genre R&B. Right hand corner here. They always leave that out. You're going to have to tell most apps, you're going to have to tell them where are you going to save this file. Now I'm going to click down at the bottom of the screen output folder. And I'm just going to uh, click on this. Change the folder to I'm going to make a Patty LaBelle one. What I did was I made a directory called music on my on my uh, C drive. So I can put all my music here. And I'm going to create a new folder. Call it Patty LaBelle. And then I'm going to select this folder. Select it. And now down here, it will say C, and then music, and then Patty LaBelle. So it'll be in the Patty LaBelle directory. Um, if you have multiple albums, what I usually do sometimes, just if I really want to organize my files, I might do a Patty LaBelle, and then the next, I'll do a, create a folder under there with the name of the album. So if you have multiple ones, you can do that too. There's an output format. MP3 is what you're going to be, the format you're going to use. Now, if you are really into audio, if you're a person that um, has sophisticated audio equipment, you manipulate these files and you do things with them, um, you have other options here for files. When I click on the little arrow here, I can see all the different types of files this does, this program, and FLAC. It's F-L-A-C. FLAC is a format. If you, are, um, if you want to save almost a near copy of the CD, that's the format to do it in. Um, otherwise, they're larger files if you use FLAC. Otherwise, you're going to be doing MP3 for most of our uses. <coughs> All right. Any questions? Oh, Express Rip, you'll get a link in the email. Um, you, and, and it is free for non-commercial use, so you can go ahead and use it. Okay, and Donna, uh -huh. what, if, what if we want to, um, if I want to put all of these on an external portable hard drive. Yeah, this is where you, now I've made this music directory. All I have to do is take that whole directory and just copy it right over to an external hard drive or a thumb drive, whatever you're using. The thumb drives are really big size now. They've got <laughs> 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. So they're really big now, the thumb drives. So either a regular external, little tiny external drive or a thumb drive, you can just copy the whole thing over. Okay. So, but I, the first step is you have to put it on to your PC and then you transfer it from the PC to... Right. Or, yeah. External so like files. right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to tell it to rip the CD. Over here in the lower right hand corner of the screen, it'll just say rip CD. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and it's going to start copying it now to this directory. It's going to do a conversion. It'll take a little while for it to do it. But I want to show you when I put that CD in. This is iTunes. iTunes immediately tells you, it knows the CD got put in my laptop. So it's now saying, it wants to confirm which one, which album did I put in. This is uh, Patti LaBelle's Greatest Hits. Now I can't rip into two, at the same time into two apps. So I could not start this right now for iTunes, but iTunes is ready to go. They're ready. I could have, you know, gone to iTunes and, told it, yes, go do, go ahead and do this CD. And then if we look over at our other example, Media Player. Media Player, you see, it has Patti LaBelle's greatest hits. I told Media Player that I have a music directory called Music. So I'm... Uh, uh, you know, ripping the CD through Express Rip, but look at my media player. 
already Windows Media Player already knows that I put this album in. It's got the album cover ready to go, and it's keeping track of the uh, files that have been brought into that directory. And what you do is you go to, and there's a RIP CD on the, you can see the, on the menu at the top here, it says RIP CD. I could have ripped it right into a Windows Media Player if I wanted also. But what I did for Media Player, I went under Organize. And I clicked on the little arrow next to Organize. And I go under Options. And then you go under Rip Music. And you tell it, Rip Music to this location. Tell it, where, where is the music going? So I, I have it going under my C drive under music. So since it knows that that's where it is, it's looking for it. So you could, you can rip it with uh, Windows Media Player, or you can use another utility like I'm using right now, Express Rip, because um, it already knows where that library is going to be saved. Let's see what questions people have. I have one. Um, is there any way to get my Alexa to play this off my computer? Or is that a totally different class? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we're going to talk about. Um, we, uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, you know, I don't have an Alexa, so I'm not sure. I know Alexa is going to take music from um, Amazon, right? It's from your Amazon right. It plays music. things off. It yeah. plays things off my Spotify. So whatever I can download on Spotify will play. Okay. Uh, would it take music from um, Yahoo? Uh, not Yahoo. Sorry. I, I, uh, YouTube. You know YouTube Music. Would it take? I it probably might. if you set it up. I should try that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Because we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about putting these files on a phone. Because right now. Okay. We're just putting it on my C drive on my laptop. Right. It's not very right. mobile. We're just doing the conversion. Um, so, uh, Sandy wanted to know how to get to iTunes from this app. Um, I have iTunes right here. I'm going to click on it and, um, I'm ripping it in express rip right now. You can't rip it in two different places at one time. So iTunes knows it, it popped up. There's a pop-up box. It knows I put a CD in my laptop and it's asking me, do you want to rip this? So we can rip this next into iTunes. All right. And let's look at other questions here. Can you save it to? Yes, you can save it to a USB player. These are just what, what these files are just going to be MP3 files. There's nothing fancy. Um, it's just a straight copy. I heard my, <laughs> my noisy little CD player just stopped. So those files are done. So we'll take a look at those. And uh, Sandy, okay, so Sandy, we'll do iTunes next. Yes, and Wade does teach, uh, John mentioned that Wade teaches an Alexa class. All right. So now what I'm gonna do, um, since we just finished Express RIP, it's gonna ask me if I wanna rip another CD or do I wanna view the files in a folder? Yeah, let's take a look at these files what they look like. This is just in my music directory. I made my folder, Patty LaBelle. Pull this out a little bit. You can see all the names. And let's see what the size is. I'm gonna right click and go to properties. Just I, People always ask, how big are the MP3 files? They're not that big. Um, eight megs. In today's standards, that's nothing. <laughs> Uh, so eight megabytes each, roughly. I mean, you'll have some variations. Some songs are longer than others. Um, but that's what that, so at this point, I know someone asked about USB um, drives or, or external drives. I can just go ahead and, you know, I can go to my C drive and just copy this entire folder to an external drive, which I recommend. It doesn't hurt to have a backup. If you have really specific music and you really don't want to lose it, you know, because you might play around with some of these players or you or iTunes and 
you know, if something happens by accident, you delete something when you're trying to learn software, at least you have a backup somewhere. So it's a good idea if you're playing, if you're going to play around with these different apps um, to get used to them, you know, make a copy somewhere. And uh, this way, if you have a little oopsie, <laughs> you accidentally delete an entire album or something, uh, you can get it back. Especially if once you've gotten rid of your CDs or something. So that's, you know, I have a whole bunch of CDs I've done here, and they're all in that music directory. All right. Since iTunes, let's see if iTunes is still waiting. I'm going to have this, this one rip into iTunes also. So I'm going to say greatest hits. It looks like it's a type thing. I'm just going to say, okay. Would you like to import the CD greatest hits into your iTunes library? So I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to start the import. If you want to stop importing, there's a stop importing button on the right side. Again, this is iTunes. So it's going to start doing that. It's just just did the first song. Now it's moving to the second. So it's going to go along. So let's talk a little bit now about the steps. We were just talking about this. Um, you're going to, whatever software you're going to use to rip the CD, open up that software, put the CD in the drive. And then hopefully it reads the CD. If it doesn't read the CD, take, um, you know, the, uh, what is that? The cloth that you would clean eyeglasses with or something like that. And give it a nice little, you know, blow on it or get eyeglass cleaner or something to just kind of, uh, clean the CD a little bit because our CDs have been sitting around for a while. They might have some smudges on them. If it can't read, I would try that first uh, to, you know, and make sure you get that list of songs showing up on your screen. You can uh, pick your file type, MP3 or FLAC. Most of us are just going to do MP3. They're smaller files, but unless you are someone who's going to be using these files, uh, maybe you do some type of sound production or something like that. If you're that type of person, you have sophisticated equipment. FLAC will give you a near copy of the CD quality, you know, sound wise. But for most of our human ears, we can't hear, tell the difference. Um, so MP3 is going to be fine. You'll have to select, uh, just like I did, the folder or the library that the music's going to go into. Even in iTunes, you have a live, you, you, you can set where that library is going to be. Takes about 20 to 40 minutes, maybe, depending on the software, to get that CD ripped once you start it. And then you can look for the music in your library. All right. Let's take a look at my media player here. I'm just going to go click under artist. And where is Patty LaBelle right here? I think I, oh, I must have ripped, ripped this once before. <laughs> I have two copies of it. But anyways, here's her album. You can play it through media player if you want. So that's, that's media player. Any questions? Let me double check. Okay. All right. So let's talk. So we, now we're just talking about putting this on your C drive, making a backup copy if it's important to you, definitely, because you never know. Um, I, I, I still, I'm, I'm wounded by iTunes from years ago. I, <laughs> started doing iTunes on my Windows PC. And then I had an issue with my PC and I was never able to get iTunes installed again. So I couldn't convert, you know, bring the files over and I lost it all. So I, 
you know, I don't know. Has anyone had that issue with Windows? <laughs> That's a problem some people have had. I've had so, that issue. Yeah, it was rough in the beginning when they had their own special. Uh, they didn't. They didn't use MP3. They had their own special file format, and you could. It was hard to move it. It was hard to transfer, and um, you know, I guess it sticks with you <laughs> once you've had that happen. You just you don't let it go. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about having this all this music on our um, laptops. And if you have some great speakers on your laptop, that's nice because you can go and listen to your music on your laptop. But it's nice to be able to take the music on the go. So let's talk about how do you do that? All right. If you are a subscriber to Apple Music, they let you upload 100,000 MP3s to their servers. So 100,000 MP3s is about 8,300 albums, <laughs> roughly. That's a lot of MP3 files. Now, if you, YouTube Music, which is owned by Google, they let you upload 100,000 MP3 files also on their, in, on their storage. This is really nice. On their storage, free of charge, you can listen to on the go. And then we're going to look at another app called Cloud Beats, which works with the iPhone world and the Android world. This is another option. Uh, it works a little different than the others. So Apple Music, again, through iTunes, you, you should be able to upload it. I can't demonstrate it to you. I'm not a, I don't subscribe to Apple Music, but just to let you know, I'm going to show you the YouTube side. You go to music.youtube.com. Log in to your account. And on the upper right-hand corner of the screen, if our pictures are in the way, you might have to move them aside. Um, just drag them over. You should see your profile button. You'll have your initials, maybe your picture if you've uploaded your picture. You click on your profile button, that little blue button. And then halfway down the menu, you're going to see Upload Music. You click upload music, and then there's my C drive. <laughs> Melissa Etheridge, this is where I left off. You can go ahead and start selecting music that you want to upload to their storage. This is kind of neat. Once you have your uh, whatever music you want up there, I'm going to get out over here. And I'll bring up my phone. I fell asleep. All right, let me bring up YouTube Music. It says YT Music right here in the uh, lower right side of this square, the white square. YT Music, red circle, play button in the center. If you click on that, it brings up the YouTube Music app. Um, there's a lot of different music apps, you know, Spotify, all, all different ones. And YouTube is just another one. I have a class on uh, music apps. If anyone feels like they need to get up a little bit on these apps, uh, which ones are current that people are using. Uh, this is one of them, uh, one of many. So yeah, I welcome you to take that class if you want to learn more. So we go into YouTube music. At the bottom, there's a library button on the lower right. I'm going to click on library. And then if I look at, let's say, um, my albums, there's two sections under it. The YT music, this is going to be um, al things that you've added to your library, you know, to w listen to later, the stuff that's being streamed from the app. And then the upload section on the right side, this is what you've uploaded, your stuff that you've uploaded. So I've uploaded um, Mary Chapin Carpenter. I think this is her one of her albums. All this, the songs are here. So I can play these off my phone. So the process is you're going to go to music.youtube.com. You upload the MP3s there. And then you come to your app on your phone. 
and you're going to find them in the library under your uploads. And then you can listen to your music from your phone. And it's a nice solution. You're using their storage. Um, so you can try that. So that's one solution for people. The next solution, let me check the questions. Okay. The next solution is to go to CloudBeats. There may be other apps out there too. I haven't searched in a while, but um, there's, you know, there are always new apps. You might find um, something else too. Um, what this does, it works both on the iPhone side and the Android. It's a music player. The nice thing is it doesn't take space on your phone. I know that's a complaint with iTunes people. You have to put all the music on the phone. So what it does is it uses your cloud storage. Okay. And you can make playlists, you know, all types of things. You can cast the music to other devices. You do like an AirPlay thing. It's free for Android people. Um, so far, I, they have not asked me for money. I have an Android. <laughs> They have a light version for iPhone, and then they have a paid version for iPhone people. But it's only, let's see, last I, last I looked, it was about $8. Let's see what it is. Yeah, $7.99. That's all it is. So what this does, you're going to tell CloudBeats where your cloud storage is. So you're either using your iCloud, Dropbox. Google Drive, you're going to put your, your MP3 files on your cloud storage. And then you point cloud beats to that cloud storage. So you're using, in this scenario, you're using your own storage, but it's the cloud. And then cloud beats will play it from there. So let me show you what this looks like on my phone. I'm going to get out of YouTube. And uh, oh, it's right here. Cloud Beats, it's, it's kind of cute. It's the cloud with the headset on it. <laughs> I'm going to open this up. And I, I put a Madonna album. I've got KT Oslin. I've got a couple albums up here, which I can just click on them and play. This is the last one I put on KT Oslin. I just hit play, and it will start playing. I scroll a little bit to the right, you will see it's a very simple interface. You just have files, playlists, artists, and albums. That's it. If I go under files, I have added my Google Drive. So what I did on my Google Drive is I made a folder called music. And I moved the stuff that was on my C drive. You can move it over or how, how many, you don't have to move everything. You can make your own decision on, you know, depending on how much cloud storage you have, but you're just going to put your files in that directory. And then you just tell the app, you know, what service you have. If I click on add a cloud, oh, they only let you add one cloud and then I have to pay. That's how they get me. <laughs> so you can only do one cloud on the free version. But you just tell it where where the where you're storing the files, and then at that point it will look for your files and play, and you'll be able to play them. Anyone have any questions about that? So this is just another way to do it. It's an an alternative for uh, the especially the iPhone people. If you're looking, uh, maybe a way to uh, get some storage off of your phone. You can, though, once you're in this app, you can download files to your, your phone for offlining. You know, if you're going to be somewhere where you, maybe you don't have connection to the internet, you can still listen to your music. So you can, you do have that option to do that. And that option, the part where you can download for offline use, for you'll have to pay for the app to have that feature. Right down here, it says, where the cloud beats for iOS, download files and folders for offline use. The so, free version doesn't have that. I do have a question. Uh -huh. um, so we put these things on our cloud 
we can't access them from our cloud unless we have something like this app. Uh, I, you still could play them from your cloud, yes. But the thing is, if you want them on your phone, if you want to like put on your headset and go run errands and listen to music, you're going to have to have some way to connect to that music. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I mean, you could try. I haven't actually tried this to just, oh, like from Google Drive, if you, I don't know if the music will play through in a, a, a folder. I mean, you could try it. Has anyone ever tried that? They're just going to your Google Drive and seeing if you can just play. <clears throat> I know on my Windows PC, you can, if you have um, multiple files in a folder, usually you can just start playing and it will play through just the folder. But yeah, you can try that. Any other questions anyone has? So it's music.youtube.com is for YouTube. Again, YouTube is you're using their storage. And Cloud Beats is there you're using your your cloud storage to uh, to attach to it and use the uh, the app. And Cloud Beats works just like any of the other uh, music apps. You know, you can play and pause and fast forward, that type of thing. There's no ads. All right. Any thoughts, um, questions anyone has? Donna, what is, huh? Groove, what is Groove Music? Groove? Groove? Win yeah, I just saw that on my Windows 10. Oh, Groove Music. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody know what Groove Music is? I think I've heard of it, but let me look. It it's showing up on your PC? Yes. Oh, it's an app. But you're seeing it on your Windows. I think it has to, oh, here we go. Windows 10. Is Do you have Windows 10? Yes. Oh, that's probably why I've seen it because I have Windows 10 too. It's an audio player. Comes with uh, Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10. It mm -hmm. used to be part of a streaming service called Groove Music. That's probably where I remember it from. Um, but they discontinued that. But it sounds like it's just a player. So you can just play music with it. Okay, thank you. I have a, oh, I just found a little um, video. I'll put it in the, e I'll put it in the email at the end. You can uh, take a look at it, and learn more about it. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, so yeah. Um, oh, John, thank you, John. He says you can play your music files locally with it. So it's just a music player. Um, and that, that's a good point to bring up the music players. Let me uh, go back into my share. Um, just I mentioned earlier about other types of music players. Here's an example of one of them. It's called Music B. This is what the interface looks like. Uh, it's got the round icons, kind of like the way iTunes does it. You can organize your files. It shows you here. They have, you can change the color of the, um, the app itself. You can customize it to the way you want it to look. It can sync with your devices. It supports playlist and podcast syncing, audiobooks. It has Groove Music support. We're just see, we're just talking about Groove Music. So it supports uh, Groove Music. So you can stream directly from Music B with Groove Music. It can do CD ripping. 
It can tag the, and tagging has to do with things like the genre of the music, the uh, year the, the music was done, the artist, all the different items that have to do with a CD. Uh, all these tags will be there, the album cover. So, and, and it will tag it so that when this music, when you're searching for an artist, it can find the files. So that's what it does. It does the proper tagging. So this is what one, one of them looked like. It's not free. A lot of these are not free. They will have some type of a charge to them. Some are free, some aren't. Um, you'll get it in the email. Uh, there'll be an article talking about Music B and its competitors. Who are the, you know, who's in this field um, of these type of music players? So, um, like I mentioned earlier, for some people, Windows Media Player is fine. You know, it just plays the music and that's it. Other people like to kind of get into it a little bit more. They want some more features. Uh, they want to, you know, have a more robust app. And that's why they have these type of apps like Music B. So, if you're interested in these type of things, you've, they usually have trials. You can always take a look, download them, take a look at them, try them out, see if you like them. And you can decide at that point. So there's these uh, MP3 uh, player apps have been around. You know, just think, what, when, when did we first start doing MP3 files? That was probably, I want to say the end of the 90s, right? When we started doing this. Um, so it's been a long time, and the, so this is a very um, robust area, shall we say. There's a lot of choices out there. All right. Yeah, the Music B site. Which app lets you play without the Internet? Okay. There, if you're on your, let's see, who asked that question? Is it on your phone? Me mechanish yeah i had asked like if you have saved it on your phone and you're outside so mm -hmm. that part of, i know you t talked about it but yeah i couldn't really get it which one was that um the uh, cloud beats will let you do that um youtube music okay. your will let you do it but um You'll have to pay the premium one to do the streaming part because the YouTube is a streaming app, right? Just like Spotify and the others. It's just that they have this one little section where you can upload your own stuff. That stuff you can you can listen to without ads um, okay. and you can do offline. But the other stuff, the other part of the app, that stuff to do offline, you'll have to pay the $10 a month or whatever they charge um, to okay. be able to do okay. that. Yeah. It's a little, little different there. And some people ask the question, what about, you know, maybe I don't want to do my CDs. You know, you can go to like Spotify or any of these apps. You know, let's look under a search here. You know, let's say, let's do, I see Tina's picture there. So let's do Tina Turner. You can look up any artist. If I look up albums right here, I can click on, on the right side of the screen. It says, see all. I'm going to look because she's got a lot of albums. <laughs> all her albums are right here on Spotify. How many of these do, do, do people own or have owned? <laughs> um, I see quite a few here. So these are all the albums she's ever done. And... You can come in here and you can just click on it and play it. You will have, if you're just doing I, uh, Spotify for free, they'll, they'll have ads. You'll have ads every four or five songs. Um, you skips, you'll be limited to skips. It's about five or six an hour. It depends on the app. Um, but, you know, for some people, they say, well, I don't know, maybe I don't need to do my CDs. I'm just going to do Spotify. Um, it really depends on what where you're at with the um, your music, how you listen to it. Uh, if the ads bother you, you probably want to have do your own CD collection at that point. Uh, but this is another option for people too: is just to you know you can find all 
unless you have very, very specific music that's um, maybe it's regional music in your area, that stuff might not be on Spotify. You can always do a search and see what's on Spotify and make your decision there. Um, it really depends on the music collection that you have. Uh, but that's another option. I do have a class on uh, how to make playlists in Spotify if you want to learn more about that, that type of thing. And John, oh, thank you, John. He said um, YouTube music lets you play music offline. And is that free, John? The free version or yeah. is it the big? Yeah, okay. Okay, that's great. I have Samsung mobile, so I'll yeah. try that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we've talked about different options. Today, you know, first of all, getting the stuff to your, you got to get it to the C drive or somewhere first. So you can use, you know, apps that are around you like Windows Media Player. If you're a uh, Mac person, you've got iTunes. iTunes can still run on Windows if you want to do iTunes. You can bring app your music in that way. Or you can use a utility like Express Rip. Maybe you just want to get everything into a directory. And then you want to play. You want to make a copy of that directory, save it off somewhere, and you want to play around and try out a bunch of apps and, you know, just have some fun with it. You can do that, too. There's, is there anyone, know, sorry, is there anyone that has a class on uh, putting DVDs on digital? There isn't, but, you know, there. I did see a class at one point uh, converting VHS to digital. So I don't know better. if he... You know what I use, though, for DVD, I have used, is an app called Handbrake. Handbrake. Okay. Hand, like your hand. And then brake, like slam the brakes on your car. Oh, brake. Okay. <laughs> and that's been a nice little utility um, for converting. And when you're doing DVD, you're, it's, all, it's like the same process, but you're converting to MP4. MP4 is the, uh, what you'll convert to. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it, that's it's a you know similar to Express Rip. It's just a simple utility that just does the conversion. So I know I've had um, some videos that like a family videos that got moved on to DVD, and then I wanted to move them into an MP4 format. Um, so that's a good way to convert, and that app works pretty well, um, and it's free. So that's nice too. So you can do your conversions. Any other questions people have? Oh, converting cassette tapes. Oh, man. Um, oh, you want, yeah. They do have these, um, I can't think of the name of it. I have to look on Amazon. Um, it's in the form of a cassette and you have a cable that you attach to it and it goes into your laptop and you play the tape and it will convert it over. They have these, I think it's, um, trying to think of the, uh, the name of it. Let me just look on Amazon real quick. I had a little device uh, that you could plug the, the, v, um, the VHS tape. You know, the, uh -huh. the eight the eight track tape into the device right. and, and put it in your cassette player and it would play. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yes, I remember those. I just went on Amazon real quick. That's See, they so have these spendy. type of things. Oh yeah. So you put the tape in and you plug it in to your um, laptop. Or look at this. This one's got a, just a thumb drive. Right here. See this one? That is a great. And it will just capture it. They've got all types of them. You'd have to, I, you know, I always look at the reviews and see what people say, if it works or not. <clears throat> um, and there's all types, you know, they'll, in this area, there's going to be, there's some though, I, I used one years ago that it was much bigger than these. These are much smaller. I had one that was a little bit bigger. I, I'd done it years ago, but yeah, it can definitely be done. So yeah, look at, I would read the view reviews to make sure that it works, that people have been able to successfully do the conversions. So you might have to do a little research, but yeah, they're there. All righty. And let's see. 
So someone's going to do some Amazon shopping later, I think. <laughs> yeah. So good luck with that, with the cassette. Yeah. Um, as I did my cassettes, but it was, a, it was a larger device that I used, but it was the same concept. You stuck the tape in and it converted and it did, it did a good job on them. I thought, um, the only thing is with cassettes, you're going to end up with one long, uh, because you, you're going to do one, one side's going to be one file. And then you're going to have the B side. If you have a B side, uh, that'll be a, a separate file when you're doing these conversions. So you'll have two files. So, um, yeah. All right, everyone. Let me uh, close out the class here. I want to thank everyone for coming today. And I hope you've, this will help you out in figuring out what to do with your, your CD collection. <laughs> uh, other classes I have are music apps to listen to your favorite music. We do have a class on converting VHS to MP3 if you're interested in that. Um, with Get Set Up, we have an email address is help at getsetup.io. It's a great all-purpose email where you can, if you have any questions, you can ask them there. If you want to refer us to an organization that you think might like our services, you can give us the organization number and someone will contact them. If you'd like to run your own little interest group or get involved more in the community, let us know and we'll find a match for you uh, with one of our guides. And again, to get your session recordings, you can always go to help at getsetup.io. And you'll get class notes at the end of this. Um, uh, the, the class notes are going to be a little long for this class, because I do give you some reviews on other apps that are out there. Um, and you'll have a feedback form. Go ahead and fill out the feedback. Put in your comments. If, and again, if you have any class ideas or anything like that, feel free to add them there. And that's the end of the class for today. Thank you very much for attending. And good luck with your conversions, everyone. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye -bye. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Donna. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.